we're going to do a new recipe today. And uh, early on I did a breakfast skillet with bacon and it, it's held up very well. But I thought I'd try a little bit of a different one today for the book. And we are going to make what I'm going to call a western breakfast skillet. And we're going to do this in a few stages. So first we're going to do the eggs. We're going to do these eggs, low heat, very slow cooking, and we're going to do them six eggs at a time. Alright, so i got six eggs here in my bowl. I'm going to just give those a whisk, quick whisk. Now. I find that if you add milk to this, it makes them really fluffy and airy. And that makes them reconstitute well and not chewy. So I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of milk to those six eggs. We're going to whisk that in. All right. The object is in this process, which I'm going, why I'm doing it so slow, is we do not want to overcook our eggs, and we want them nice and airy and not chewy. So we're going to put this on. I'm going to start out on medium low, which is 175 degrees. Now once that gets heated up, we're going to keep this moving so that it cooks nice and evenly. I know this is very tedious compared to putting a nice hot skillet on there and getting these scrambled up quickly, but I assure you, in my experience, this makes a very palatable rehydrated egg. Now, obviously, when we reconstitute, that also has a bearing on the texture of the egg. So, let's say, for example, we were just doing these eggs and we reconstituted them. You would not want to add hot boiling water because that boiling water would instantly cook those eggs that are already cooked, but it would bring them to almost a hard boiled texture egg. And I think that's where. I've gone wrong in the past is we put too much hot, too hot of a water in there. So you would want to bring it, you know, water at about the temperature of the egg that you want to eat. And let it reconstitute in that. I'm just get, making sure those egg whites are all mixed in well. Broken up. All right. I think what I'll do on this is I'm going to fast forward this when I edit the video because it is going to be a long process. So here we go. See how that's starting to cook those eggs up there? That's exactly how we want it. Nice and slow. I'm going to keep this moving pretty much. I did not put in any oil in my pan here. It is a non-stick pan. And that is another advantage of cooking it low and slow.
Okay, see how those fluff are nice and fluffy, nice and moist. Turn the heat off. Like that. Now I'll go wash this and we'll do it two more times for a total of 18 eggs. So I won't bore you with the repeat process, but I'll do this. I'll wash this, start over, do six more eggs, wash it, start over, and do six more eggs. Now that took about eight, eight minutes to do that, but it is worth the effort, believe me. Okay, so I'll see you once I get the rest of these 18 eggs done. Okay, there we have it. There's my 18 eggs scrambled up. We're going to set these aside. I'm going to wash that up, and we'll move on to the next step. I'll see you then. Okay, what we got here is I got two 8-ounce packs, packs of Smithfield diced ham. Now I looked at they had cubed ham and diced ham and the cubed ham looked like a bigger chunk and for reconstitution I want a finer chunk so we're going to use the diced ham. This is eight ounces and I got two of those. What do they call it? Diced ham. See how small those chunks are? That's perfect for reconstitution. And by the way this is 95 percent fat free. in my skillet here. We're going to put that on high. And we're just going to brown that up a little bit. While that's getting browned, I got a 12 ounce frozen diced onions and one pound of sliced red pepper blend which has red, green and yellow peppers. Should go nicely. Now, as I'm stirring this, I can see a little bit of oil in there coming off of this ham. That's cool, which is another good reason to do the eggs the way I did, because we didn't add no oil to that. We're going to be adding all these vegetables, plus we're going to be adding hash browns, baked hash browns, not fried. So I am not going to be concerned about that little bitty oil content at all. I don't think it will affect the... Uh, storage time of these in one bit, especially if we package it very well in a Mylar bag with a proper O2 absorber. Okay, that's good enough. We don't really, this is pre-cooked anyway, I just wanted to get a little brown texture on that. So let's put our bag of onions, frozen. bag of peppers frozen in there. Wow, that's a lot. That might be too much, but we'll we'll work we'll work with it. Cook, continue cooking that on high until those onions start to get a little translucent and we'll call her good. 
I'll be right back. Okay, those cooked down quite well. So now I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to take this large bowl here. And we're going to, this slotted spoon here, let all that liquid drain off. Put that in my bowl. Okay, so there it is. Now, we're going to take our eggs and mix that in with it. Well, there is to that. We're going to put that in the fridge now while we move on to the very last step, which is my hash browns. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so this is take two. I did one tray and that came out okay, but I uh, didn't line my pan. I tried stirring, uh, flipping them before they were too crispy so I kind of got mushy so we are going to do another bag of these hash browns shredded potatoes these are 100% potatoes no oil no seasoning no anything just potatoes frozen and what did I say, did I say this weight is one pound 14 ounces and I use two bags of this, so it would be two pounds, 28, you know, I ain't going to do the math. Two one pound, 14 ounce bags. This time we're going to do it on parchment paper. to get rid of any of these big chunky pieces. I don't really want those. I want nice individual pieces. Alright, so I have my oven set preheated at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. These have been spread out fairly evenly. I'm going to pop these in the oven and keep an eye on them until they're brown. And I will let you know how long I cook them for. But obviously your oven might vary. So let me get these in the oven and I will come right back when they're done. Okay, that looks much better. So we've got some crispy ones over here. But we've got some non-crispy ones. So when that mixes together, you're going to get a nice crunch with your uh, scramble. So we're just going to break those up a little bit. And let them cool down. And we'll get them into our skillet powder mixture. There you go. Skillet mixture. Those are just about perfect. You want some soft ones in there for the potatoey texture, but you want some crisp ones in there for the fried texture, which we didn't use any oil. So it might not look too appealing, but I assure you the end results are really, really good. Alright, so here's our scramble mix that we made earlier that's been sitting in the fridge. Just 
I'll give that a fluff. And let's put our potatoes in. Here's my first batch. They weren't as pretty as that batch. But I'm assure, I assure you they'll taste good. Go ahead and mix those in. So we're going to look for two and a half pounds per tray. That's 1.75 pounds. All right, let's put our divider in there. My dividers are set up in tens. That's 1.5 pounds because I'm wanting to make sure I got enough for one more tray. And if I have more than enough, I'll put a little bit more on that tray. All right. So if you put your trays, put one and a half pounds in each tray, you won't be far out. I'll get these in the freezer till they're frozen solid and into the freeze dryer they'll go. That leaves me one slot for a recipe that I'm trying to perfect. This is my third go at it and I'm pretty close, which is perfect, which is what I like to do with a spare slot. So, next time you see this, it'll be coming out of the freeze dryer. I'll see you then. Okay, there we have it. My Western breakfast skillet. We had just had a disaster on my freeze dryer. For some reason it lost all pressure, all vacuum. It was at the end. Actually it was into my extra dry time, so this is this is dry, so we're gonna get this packaged away. And I'm gonna have to do some work on my freeze dryer and figure out what happened there. And then we'll do a taste test on this. So let me get this packaged. So we're going to put three squares in each pouch. this all packaged up like that and then we'll come back and drop a 300 cc O2 absorber in each one of those pouches. So let me get this done and out of the humidity and I'll be right back. Okay so it caught me by surprise so I wasn't totally prepared but I to package these right now but what I have here is a jar of Rotel Velveeta cheese dip that I made up. What I did was uh, took a two pound block of Velveeta, cut it up in chunks and then emptied two smaller type cans of the Rotel regular into the bowl with the chopped up Velveeta and microwaved that and stirred it until it was uh, nice and smooth. And I did add all the juice to that. I do have a video for that but I don't have that in my mind right now so when we do our taste test I'll try and remember to tell you the episode for the Rotel. Alright. 
but we want to add some cheese to each of these pouches. So I'm going to add one. I'm going to put a lot of cheese in it too. About three tablespoons of cheese in each pouch. So let me get that done and I'll be right back. One, two, three. Okay, what a week. Ended up having to replace my pump. We got that in and installed yesterday. Today's Sunday. And I'm going to get this video out. So we are going to rehydrate my Western breakfast skillet. And uh, thank God that we got my freeze dryer going. So I, I'm happy with that. Well, let's get this open and have breakfast. That's what it looks like on the inside. Take out my 300 cc O2 absorber. We're going to start out with my three quarters of a cup of hot water. I have a cup here and I might end up adding more but I like to start with three quarters at first just so we don't get it too soupy. Alright, so I'll close that up. moisture on a little bit of everything there there we go we'll leave that set for two minutes I'll see you in two minutes all right that's been two minutes let's open it up give that a little stir quite frankly that looks about right let me see have a taste there and see what that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to add any more water to that. But we're going to let that sit for another two minutes. Just a touch to finish that off. Just a little bit. So three quarters of a cup. See you in two minutes. All right, there we go. That's my last two minutes. Let's open it up. Give it one more stir for good measures. Man, that looks good. All right, let's talk about my pouches. I get these pouches from topmylar.com and they are what they call a single mill pouch. They make a double mill pouch as well. Uh, I don't use those as often because I'm a single man. And I want a single mill. But I do have some. But what I like about these pouches is they're wider than they are tall. They're 7 mil thick and they are designed to hold boiling water. This is all from their website. So they're really a quality pouch, a high quality pouch, and I buy them by the case. I have seen just recently like in the past week or two, uh, a knockoff meal pouch on Amazon that does not look the same quality. For one, the zip lock is very close to the heated seal edge, if that makes sense. This has got a nice wide gap. I threw the other piece away, but it's got a nice wide gap for you to seal with on this one. And I don't look like it's, they're calling it 7.5 mil, but I don't know. If that's 7.5 mil each side or 7.5 mil combined, both sides, which would make it about a three and a half or something like that. I don't know. But these are quality. They're the original. Topmylar.com. And what they're doing right now is for my viewers, they are offering you a discount. So if you spend $50 or more at Topmylar.com, and use the promo, uh, promotion code BIBS, B-I-B-S, on checkout, 
you will save five dollars so that's spend fifty or more and save five dollars with promotion code bibs at topmylar.com they're really a convenient bag because we can eat these right from the pouch you don't need to plate it up or anything no dirty dishes but for my viewers and for the video's sake I like to dish this out so let's have a look at what this came out like Look at that. Now that looks so good. You get the last of that yumminess out. That looks so good. I'm going to have to get a close up of that. All right. Let's dig in. I already know it tastes good because I just tasted it when I stirred but check this out oh man that is so good mm, mm -mm. the cheese really add a lot to this the uh, peppers and vegetables and onions they've all come out perfectly the dice ham instead of the cube we use dice which is a very small chunks of ham have reached hydrated perfectly oh my god oh man it's so good I'm going to have to let my brother have a taste of this before I come back. I'll be right back. Okay, I had to get out of there real quick because he might have wanted a, a second bite and I don't want to share it. <laughs> but he said it was really good. Better than Denny's. That's a compliment. Mm. So we got a combination of the browned hash browns which gives you a little bit of crispiness in this plus the softness of the not browned hash browns just a perfect combination and this is delicious I didn't season this with salt and pepper because I figured the Velveeta Rotel dip and also the ham would have enough salt for me and the spiciness from the Rotel would just give it a hint of, of heat to it so it doesn't need the pepper in my opinion the eggs have come out beautifully And I'm sure that's a combination of cooking low and slow and adding milk. So when those eggs were done, it might have looked a little bit soupy on the camera. But I assure you they were nice. And by being that way, when we freeze dry them, all that moisture evaporates, obviously, or sublimates is a proper term and at least air pockets in all that all the food wherever water was it's now air pockets that aids in the rehydration and gets moisture back into those pockets quickly and texture wise it really improves it now we wouldn't use hot boiling water to reconstitute because that would hard boil those eggs instantly so it's a nice hot 
water, but not boiling. About the temperature that you want your eggs to be when you eat them. Yeah, the cheese is a good addition to this. I think I put three tablespoons of that Velveeta powder. That's about right. Well, you guys are going to have to trust me on this. It's worth the effort in cooking those eggs slow and low. Probably the most time consuming part of this was I did it slow and low and in small batches. I did six eggs at a time. Probably could have got away with more, but I wanted to control the eggs so that I didn't burn them. There you go. The Great Western Omelette, freeze-dried by John and Bibbs. I hope you enjoyed watching that video, this video, and I hope you tried this recipe because, trust me, you'll, you'll enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for watching.